indicated, as we've just um, uh, illustrated, that he may need Democratic votes to help pass this laddered continuing resolution. Nobody else seems to like this idea all that much. Uh, working with Democrats, though, might work. But it's ultimately what undid uh, Kevin McCarthy. So Johnson's been on the job for less than a month. Talk to me about how you you're a strategist. How, how could this possibly play out? Well, I feel about advising this group the same way I did when I was asked to do debate prep for Sarah Palin. I, I'm not good enough. Um, look, um, you know, the, the problem here is there's there's no reason to these people to come together. I mean, you really saw this the other night in the debate. There's no optimistic vision. There's no unifying theme. You know, we've had that in our politics a lot, be it compassion and conservatism, be it hope and change. Um, and, and you don't have that. You have this sort of make America great again out there, which nobody really knows what that means other than, like, those of us who uh, are majority white should settle grievances. It's not an optimistic vision. So. You know, to organize anything like this, to bring people together, think about it like a sports team. You're standing there, you're in a locker room. What do you say to say, okay, let's do this together for a greater good? And there is no greater good that they're concerned with. And that it just is sort of a hollowness at the core of where the Republican Party is, which is a lack of governing philosophy. Well, uh, Steve, let's talk about this, because I was I was covering the war in Israel when this all went down. And I, I had to admit that I'd not really heard much about Mike Johnson uh, ever before. And, and my optimistic view of it was that the guy's new, maybe doesn't have the baggage uh, within the party that McCarthy has, hasn't had the missteps. Um, maybe he's the guy they can coalesce around for some kind of vision that that Stephen's ta that that, uh, that Stewart's talking about. But. But that hasn't happened. The vision hasn't been presented. The optimistic view hasn't been presented. No one's coalesced around anything. What what happens now? Well, I, I, I think it's important to understand why this has unfolded the way it has. I mean, I, I think you're right that when, when Mike Johnson got the gavel, there was an opportunity. There was an, op there's an opportunity for them to kind of turn the House Republican conference off and back on again. This was going to be a new day in GOP politics. But the problem is, that the divisions that existed under McCarthy haven't been resolved. The, 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 no one's changed their minds. The, no one has necessarily shifted focus in such a way as to think that there will be a new constructive governing party. It's the opposite. They're continuing to, to, to be divided against themselves. They're continuing to fight amongst, amongst themselves. And, and they still can't figure out, to Stewart's point, what kind of vision they're going to try and pursue, what kind of thesis they're going to try and pursue. And so with that in mind, the, the problems that existed before, meet, you know, put it this way, meet the new House Republican Party, it's the same as the old Republican Party. It's the, the divisions haven't been resolved, and there's no reason to think that's going to change anytime soon. Uh, Stuart, let's let's talk about. Um,